Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Is it time to sell? That's the question we're gonna try to answer today for all different types of cards on the market right now in FIBA 23. Prices are still high, but we have a lot of impending supply and an impending road to the knockouts promo coming this Friday. And I think that that could cause a lot of market movements and a lot of change on the market. So we're gonna try to unpack that all today from cards that are out of packs to low tier to high tier cards a lot of you guys with your teams might be wondering nate i've got this card i'm making so much profit on it because i bought it a couple weeks ago when do i need to sell before the market does drop off and i want to take a look at that and talk through that in today's video of course also take a look at team of the week three dropping today we didn't have uefa marquee matchups yesterday so we'll discuss through that could it be today and we'll take a look at that Gokpo SBC that made a lot of Dutch players rise a lot in price. So we're going to do all that and more in today's video. If you're excited for it, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you are new. Let's talk market, right? Because I do think there are a good amount of players right now that, especially if they're lower rated and especially if they are out of packs, it is a great time to sell. And if you think about the timing of the market right now, Think back to last week on Wednesday, where we saw an actual kind of peak for a lot of these cards as well. Let's take a look back on the market and look at a few cards, prices on this game. Let's take a look at Rashford, right? Lower rated card. Last week on Wednesday was kind of like the peak. Right before content on Wednesday last week, we saw a peak on a lot of cards before they dropped into the weekend. And then, of course, the lower rated ones continued to fall further. Rashford, of course, had the player of the month. Definitely affected his gold card price. But you see Wednesday, 23,000 coins for Rashford. He continued to drop off. Let's look at a guy like Jota. Very popular striker right now in this game. Jota had a nice rise right on Wednesday, 67K. Dropped down to Friday on 55 with all the ones to watch packs and supply and panic. And now he's all the way back up to 70,000 coins. I think that today, Wednesday, brings a good opportunity to cash out on a few cards. Now, specifically, like we said, the out-of-packs gold cards like this Anthony, like the Renato Sanchez, like the Darwin Nunez, these, especially the lower-rated ones, like Anthony being 70K, I just don't think this is going to last for that long. He's going to be back into packs on Friday with Road to the Knockout being out. There's going to be a lot of packs open. There's going to be more promo packs in the store. And the number one thing I'm worried about with these types of cards this weekend is the supply. So it might seem like a little bit of a no-brainer, but for a guy like Anthony, for a guy like Darwin Nunez, for any of these guys that are in the ones to watch team, that their gold card is out of packs, I would say today's a great day to be taking the money on players like this. Even the higher rated ones, I would say, you know, Lewandowski, Rudiger, those types of cards have risen up a lot extra since they have been out of packs. I think it's a good idea to be taking the coins on a card like this as well, who was 100K right but when he went out of packs. Now he's like 140, 150. I think that's a good opportunity to sell. Also, the other types of cards that I would 100% be selling in the next day or two would be these lower rated cards. That, like again, I said, they're just going to get supplied so much on the market this weekend. You saw it last weekend, right? Remember some of the low rated cards that had big dives in price? Some of them had a bit of a bounce back just because they're super meta like this from Pong. He's even up a bit more because of, like I said, with the Gakpo SBC coming out, a lot of people need those extra Dutch links in their team. But low rated cards, we're talking about like this firm pong we're talking about a claustrum and anything that's like 82 rated and below um just again be careful that's what that's the word that i would say and advise is be careful with these cards because they're going to get packed a lot and people are going to be upgrading from these types of cards in the teams very very soon as they get rivals rewards on thursday as they get into the first weekend league and as we have people playing champs qualifiers right now and getting coins from that these are the types of cards I would look to sell before they get supplied more and continue to drop off. Nuno Mendez would be another one that I maybe would say to sell. Lower tier guys that are going to get supplied a lot this weekend. Again, we've been talking about lower tier cards and staying away from those for um, longer periods of time. Those will absolutely drop off this weekend as well. Now, let's talk about the big boys, the Benzema's, right? The Ronaldo's. What are these guys going to do this weekend? Because they're up a lot in price. And this is where a lot of you guys are having the struggle right now is do I sell a Benzema that I bought for maybe 50,000 coins after his price range got updated last week at 132k? Do I sell an Erling Holland that's extinct on the market right now? Maybe he's in team of the week. We don't have leaks as of right now. Do I sell him at 350? Or, you know, do I sell a Ferland Mendy who's an 83 rated card, but one of the best left backs in the game, who's 113,000 coins? Here's what I have to say about this. 
Honestly, this weekend is a big question mark, right? A lot of people are going to take the money on a few of these cards, like Mendy, like the Benzema, like the Varane, your, your high tier meta, right? I do see people taking the money on these cards starting today on Wednesday, because again, you've got rivals rewards, you've got some supply coming in today. Uh, maybe if they drop you away from marquee matchups again, who knows? Thursday, you've got marquee matchups and the rivals rewards. And then of course, on Friday, you've got a big promo pack supply. So I could see an opportunity here where maybe you do want to sell a guy like a Kunde, or maybe you do want to sell a guy like a, a Rafinha or a De Young, even though they're higher rated. If you say right now that De Young is like 92,000 coins after rising a little bit, right? You know, maybe maybe this weekend he goes back down into like below 80K like he did last weekend on the ones to watch with all the supply and the panic selling. Is, is that possible? I think it's possible. So that's where the question mark is with some of these cards. But also I could see them late Friday night. And this is, I'm going to talk about this a lot throughout the rest of this week as well. With the weekend league demand being there and with people continuing to upgrade teams and getting more coins every single day on this game, cards that are of the high tier, that are the most meta, these guys, I mean, they're going to bounce back. If they do drop at all during the next couple of days or on Friday, you're going to see some big time bounce backs on cards if they drop off a lot because people will be going out and they'll be buying teams for the weekend league. So for the high tier cards, it's a bit more of a question mark. I do think there is an opportunity to maybe sell today or tomorrow and then buy at a lower price on Friday if you want to mess with your team like that. But if you are up so much on a card already and you're like, Nate, I know that Ronaldo is not going to go back to 300K where I bought him at. Like this dude is not going to be 300K this weekend. If he drops maybe to like 520 or something like that, that's what you would expect for a card like this. So I wouldn't have to, I wouldn't say you're panicking by any means on a card like this. But that's kind of the situation with the market. Out of packs cards, ones to watches should be pretty safe. Of course, a lot of these guys are progressing towards their upgrades. I'm not expecting massive rises for these out of packs. Um, I'm just saying they should hold their price pretty steady. Same thing with out of packs team of the week cards and with heroes. Um, there could be a little bit of a drop this weekend on Friday, but then I think they would rise back very nicely onto the weekend as well. So again, that's kind of the scenario with a lot of these top tier cards is maybe you sell today if you want. You don't have to, right? Again, you can look at this two different ways. If you bought Ferlin Mendy for like 50K, you're like, Nate, I'm up 50,000 coins or I'm up 70,000 coins in this card right now. I, should, I might as well just hold it, right? Yes, that's one thought. Also, one thought is, okay, let me sell this card, take my profit and try to buy back 10K lower on the weekend. So wherever you like to, to see yourself in that scenario the most, that's kind of where you can put yourself and just plan out the next couple of days. If you're already done with your champs qualifiers, that maybe you hold on the card, right? That sort of thing. All of those thoughts kind of go and run through where you're at in your personal ultimate team and just where you might think you, how much time you have to access the market, how much time you have to be monitoring these player prices, factor that into there as well. Um, but I don't think you will see, I don't think you're gonna see a legit market crash this weekend. I don't think it'll be a huge market crash where prices are absolutely getting dusted everywhere. Um, it's a little bit too early for that, but we're not far off. And that's what I wanna talk about next is, you know, we talk, we're talking a lot about the market right now. We do have a leak for the promo that is coming on Friday, and it is a big one. Now, it's not much of a leak. We might get some more information about this promo today, but also around this time of the year, we usually do have a market drop-off. In the month of October, there's been a market crash in both of the last two years, but usually it's in the middle to later stages of the month. Of course, right now we are in the fifth, right? October 5th, beginning of the month. Sheriff tweeted yesterday, Rhodes and Knockout promo is coming this Friday. Not really that big of a surprise. He said, as expected, we should see more promos with only one team. And if you actually go back to the EA website and like, did EA actually say this? They did. Much like the football schedule, we'll be condensing our campaigns, promos, to ensure we deliver the campaigns you know and love, as well as introducing new ones. As a result, we're reducing the length of ones to watch from two weeks to one. So since they reduced ones to watch to one week, that of course is making us assume that since they're trying to fit these promos in before the World Cup, which is literally a month away, um, you know, I think EA would probably make this road to the knockout promo one week as well. And hopefully that means a few more cards in packs, but the way that ones to watch went, we didn't have that many extra cards in packs. I mean, we literally just had the starting 11 um, and then a couple on the mini release on Sunday. Of course we had a couple extra in there. So, you know, I really hope that we have more than like a 15 man promo squad. 
for Road to the Knockouts because Road to the Knockouts is a very, very high promo and it did cause a lot of market movements last year. Road to the Knockout last year, week two, actually did crash the market a very considerable amount. And this is just the time frame I want to put you guys in. Uh, like remember Road to the Knockouts, we had Fakir, Bernardo Silva, we had a couple, we had so many great SBCs and objectives and just great players in packs that were pretty cheap and they were live and upgrading. So it was great content, great cards and packs and a decently high pack weight. And that's what really makes the market die off and drop. But every single year it kind of happens around the same time. This is last year's Hyunmin Sun's gold card, right? Take a look at his graph. Um, he started to drop off. Sunday, October 17th, he kind of hit a peak, 313,000 coins. Then for the next two weeks, he went from 313 all the way down to 173 by the end of October. Notice again, he kind of hit a peak and the drop kind of started around the middle of October. Let's go back to FIFA 21, two years ago. Hyunmin Sun's gold card once again. Hyunmin Sun kind of hits a peak, oh, the 15th of October. And then what does he do? He proceeds to drop down 100,000 coins over that very next weekend and then stays below 200K until the end of October. So we are probably, as EA and how FIFA likes to repeat itself, we are really not that far away from what could be our first market crash, true market crash of the year. Everything so far has gone up, 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 and it's never, it hasn't really stopped yet, right? That's how the market has been so far. Of course, we had a little bit of a blip last Friday with ones to watch, but I would say that don't get too comfortable holding these cards, and it does seem a bit crazy for like the past week for like every single card in this market to continue to rise up more and more and more. All I'm saying is I'm throwing some caution in the wind is that some of these gold cards, yes, they could lose value this weekend, but I do think that we're still two weeks away from like a massive market crash, maybe like one and a half weeks away from a massive market crash. Just know that we're in, we're entering that zone of like market crash zone, right? So that's what I wanted to go back and show you those graphs because again, this game, although, you know, it is different every single year, also EA like to kind of you know, follow the same repetitions in some way, shape, and form. So I would expect that sometime during this month of of, of October, we would have a good sized, a, a real market crash. So that's kind of how I'm feeling on the market right now. I don't really have any tradable players in my team. And I, that's the way that I just like to play this game because it takes a lot of the worry out of it. I like to try players. I'll buy players. Like I really want to buy Jordi Alba right now because this guy sucks at left back and I need an extra chemistry, that sort of thing. I'd love to try Militao in here in defense as well, that sort of thing. But you know, I, I usually, I buy those players, I try them out and I sell them, right? That's kind of how I like to run my account. And I think that having that sort of mindset, maybe for the next couple of days, might help you out a little bit as well, especially if other people are starting to get worried. The last thing I'll say before we move on is if people wake up today on Wednesday or, or tomorrow on Thursday, if we get a loading screen today on Wednesday and people start to panic, but the real the real thing is here, if people just decide that it's time to sell cards, right? If Patreons and if groups and if just like the aura of the market kind of changes and you start to see prices drop off and everybody starts undercutting and panicking, when people decide they're going to sell, then the market drops off, right? Because there is a lot of, you know, impact in that way on the market. When people decide a certain thing, it impacts the market. So the market, especially yesterday, has been, honestly, it's pretty stagnant. Not ma very many movements. Yeah, I've been making some coins. And of course, I'm not sitting here worried about a big crash. As you can see, I got players on my transfer list I'm trading with at the moment. I'm flipping cards, listing for lazies, getting some deals out there, trying to make coins, and I'm not expecting a huge crash. But all I'm saying is, once you see people start to decide that they wanna sell, that's gonna start the downturn on the market as well. Now, let's talk about Wednesday content today. How could today look on FIFA? Well, as I already mentioned, um, I would imagine that EA would drop a loading screen either today or tomorrow, and I could see it being today. EA like to do the Wednesday loading screens. They make, it, they make it very vague, right? It'll say something like, Road to the Knockouts, available in one day, 23 hours, and just show the card design maybe, or just show you know something simple like they did for ones to watch. I do think that's very possible we could get a loading screen today on Wednesday. Could that cause some panic? Maybe a little bit. Again, really what causes the panic and the market crash is what happens inside the promo if the content's really insane. That's a piece of content to watch out for today. And also today, Team of the Week number three is going to be dropping. And as I'm recording this video, I'm shocked to say there are no leaks. I'm shocked, man. I, I really thought there was going to be some leaks. Maybe EA is getting better at like not leaking the team of the week um, until like right before or 
passing out the info. I really don't even know as we're struggling to log into FIFA, but um, I really don't know who's in Team of the Week today. The only kind of hint that I always look for on like Tuesdays heading into Wednesdays is what gold cards are maybe rising to the top of the popular list because if there are people that have leaks privately, they're not sharing them yet, like I think Raphael's get Raphael Leal is getting into team of the week because he has all of a sudden in the past hour or two kind of gone up about 2,000 coins from 19k to about 21,000 coins and he's kind of gone up on the popular list as well. He's kind of coming up here to the top of the list. That makes me think that people are a investing in Raphael Leal and that makes him basically a candidate to be in team of the week. I'm also seeing this with Timo Werner. Timo Werner was like 6k yesterday after a little bit of a you know fluctuation. And now he's all of a sudden just jumped up to 7,000 coins. Hmm, interesting, right? So, you know, we don't have any concrete leagues for Team of the Week 3 yet today. Um, but it should be a decent Team of the Week. Of course, all, it's all about Erling Holland. If Holland gets in this Team of the Week, it'd be pretty monstrous. And, of course, it would mean an upgrade for his Ones to Watch card. If you have the Ones to Watch Holland right now, what is he? Like 1.85? Man, I'm selling this guy in the hype. I really am. I think Holland's inform would probably settle in the range somewhere of like 750 to 800K, um, as it would be an 89 rated card. It'd be the same rating as this one's to watch. They will both get 89 rated. Um, you know, I, th I think it would be a million coins, maybe a smidge under a million coins by the time we get to the weekend. At least it should be because it's gold cards 350. And I think if his gold card was in packs, it'd be more like. 300k or maybe even like 250 on the market because it's a little bit lower rated and you know some people on old gen maybe don't like the lengthy uh everything that's going on with new gen and stuff it may not not be as meta over there but he is meta and he is very very hype overall in real life and in the next gen version of the game for sure so it's all about team of the week three today we're going to keep an eye on that watch out for the leaks watch out for the fluctuations before 6 p.m because we probably will get leaks later on today content wise we didn't have marquee matchups yesterday. We didn't have the away from marquee matchups like we were potentially going to see. I guess there is a small bit of opportunity that it could drop today. Um, again, I think I, that I think that opportunity is small. Um, but you know, I think EA has dropped the SBC before on Wednesdays. I also know that they have dropped the SBC before delayed, like it's dropped an hour after content or an hour and a half because they try to drop it around the time when the Champions League games are like starting or or being played. So. EA could do some finicky stuff with that. I don't know if that's going to happen today. The other SBC that we still haven't seen yet, uh, I think it's tomorrow on Thursday. That was the original leak, was Raheem Sterling ones to watch. And if you, if we're being honest, the content during this promo, like ones to watch content specifically, it's been pretty average, right? We've had Cassie SBC, which was a W. We had Thiago Silva, which was, which was nice. But really, it's been the player of the months and just the random pack SBCs without EA messing up uh, the, you know, the Holland's transfer SBC. And, you know, we're still awaiting the uh, compensation from that. I mean, it's been a pretty quiet week. So that's just kind of how I'm feeling right now. Of course, that could change a little bit today. Um, if we do get Sterling, I think Sterling is tomorrow, though. Other than that, really don't know what's going to happen today on Wednesday besides Team of the Week. Probably a new Silver Stars. I would expect to see a new Silver Stars player. So if you had Silver guys, watch out for those moving on the market today. Also, the 78 plus expires today. Really random. Uh, but that SBC goes away today on Wednesday. Not sure why they made that available for such a short uh, time span. But it is what it is. Now, also, I want to take a look at this Gokpo SBC for just a minute. This SBC is really, really nice. GG's to EA, specifically on the price point for this SBC. We knew that it was dropping today. yesterday. We also knew the card and what it was going to be. 2,600 upvotes. And what this also gave us insight on was when a player that is not already fitting into a lot of people's teams for chemistry, like this league or this nation, we got a really good taste today of what types of cards will go up in the future when we get SBCs like this. A guy that's not super popular or in a popular um, league spe specifically, Gakpo, 27,000 coins, controlled. I don't know how to make him. Does an architect make him? I don't know what's this guy, what you give this guy. I think he can only be controlled. But high and average body type, um, and he is a pretty good looking card. It looks like people are running a hunter on him. A hunter, yeah, he looks cracked out with a hunter. So regardless of whether this is a super sub for you, um, it's out for how long? It's out for 30 days. This would be a really, really good super sub, or if you want to fit him into your team, it's a really good value SBC. So GG's to EA Sports. They also changed like the work rates on him. So I think he's high medium now, 
which is a dub. So you've got a lot of uh, Dutch players that have gone up in price. We looked at the De Jong already. This Depay has now gone extinct. So it's more of the nation links for a guy like Gakpo, where you, if you put Gakpo on your team, you know, you can use a Depay, you can use a Van Dijk, you can use a De Jong to get yourself some links there. Or, you know, some of those players, of course, the um, um, Dirk Coit, the new hero card went up a lot yesterday with a huge panic buy. Again, this is what you see happen, right? You see a complimentary good on the market rise up big time in price when there's a really hyped SBC that's been released. Now, this guy's about 260K. He was around 300,000 coins at his peak on the market yesterday. That was like peak time. Um, but again, that gives you a nice couple of links there with the, the league and the nation for Dirk quite to Gakpo. So a lot of people went out and bought this card. If you have this guy, I'd sell him in the hype because of course the hype will wear off at some point and this card will probably drop back down a little bit into what's more of a reasonable area. He's not a terrible card. He's three, th three star, three star, um, and just a way to get Gakpo in the team on full chemistry. So W by EA Sports for that Gakpo. But other than that, it was a pretty quiet day yesterday. There was a brand new objective in a friendly mode. And this is actually an L. First order Fiesta. Um, you have to win seven matches in the homegrown 11. Um, you know, friendly here. It's first on players exactly 11. And you can only play 10 matches uh, a week. And I don't know if this was an error, but you can only play 10 matches in total. So you have 10 matches basically to get yourself um, an 80 an 80 rated rare plus players pack, a two rare gold pack, and a 75 plus. And if you win all of them or you get seven, you get an 83 plus. Like I don't I don't really want to go play seven games and to get an 83 plus pack. That grind to me is not worth it. I'd rather go grind rivals because I'm still trying to get points. Uh, to get high enough to even qualify for the weekend league and to play qualifiers. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. I know a lot of you guys might be in the same boat, grinding the rivals, getting up and getting those best rewards. If I win one more game, I get to the D7, I get better rewards or grinding. I played a lot of games yesterday, working on getting my points up. Going to play a lot of games today on Wednesday as well to get more points up so that's kind of how i'm feeling about the market over the next couple of days drop a comment down below what you're thinking for your team again it's a new game cross-platform market new year the market's different every single year again drop your comments down below of what you think is going to happen this weekend on the market i do see the potential for a bit of a dip but then a rise but let me know what you think down below of course if you did enjoy the video today smash a thumbs up on it and of course subscribe if you're new hop in the twitch stream today we'll be streaming fifa watching the market making coins and playing a few games as well. Again, thanks for watching the video today, guys. It's been Nate the Foot Accountant. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.